All right, so we're going to get started now, our first day of the part two class. We're going to talk about LinkedIn, make a couple of notes here, and then we'll get hands on. Um, today's big topic is LinkedIn. Look at LinkedIn.com, it's the professional social network. There are many social networks out there. I can pull up a list over on Wikipedia of literally 200 social networks. We know all of the big ones. We talked about them last time, Facebook, Twitter, etc. LinkedIn is another one. The purpose of LinkedIn is it's the professional social network. It's where you go to hopefully network. Whereas in the real world, I might go to a, a mixer, I might go to a networking event to meet real people that can further my career. LinkedIn is that digitally. So a network to meet people that will further my career or provide value to my business. Again, the keyword of business, but this will apply to any online endeavor you're trying to do. This one focuses, this network focuses on, on that. It's like a digital, it's many things at once. It's like a digital business card. So, like a business card, like a resume, like a blog, um, like a news site. LinkedIn is many of those things. We will look at creating, an, creating a profile so that it's like a, oops, like a business card where it shows off your most valuable information, phone number, website, all of that stuff. It's like a resume because it shows all of your skills, your abilities, your projects, your, um, uh, your value. Um, it's a blog. You'll be able to write articles here. Get these articles visible by more people. Those people could then in turn help you. And it's like a news site where you can keep up to date with the industry, your own updates about your own company can be used uh, as a person or a business. Most likely, if you already have a, a LinkedIn account, it's most likely a personal account. We will see that we can add to it also a business account, a business listing. Uh, it's up to you to decide if that's going to be valuable for you to do both, but at the very least, we will have a personal one. And like on the other networks, that personal one is just there as a stepping stone to use the business. You don't have to put anything personal on the personal account, but we need one in order to create the business account. Each network has these concepts. Every network has posting something. On Twitter, it's a tweet. On YouTube, it's a video. On LinkedIn, you know, you post something. You post something to every network. On Pinterest, they would call it a pin. But on every network, you post something. You share something. Every network then has a way for people to reply. Conversations. Every network has a way of sharing. I posted something on Google Plus, it was so good, someone else copied it and shared it to their connections, which is good, of course. I reach more people when people share my stuff. LinkedIn has that as well. LinkedIn has all of these basic concepts that the other networks have. So then again, well, why do we need another network? This one focuses on, this, on the professional aspect of things. So I'm going to say about this network, use LinkedIn selfishly. Not selflessly, selfishly. Use LinkedIn selfishly in that what's in it for me if I connect with you? Whereas every other network has a way for you to connect with people, followers, following, and such. So those are connections following, followers, 
We have the same thing on LinkedIn. Someone wants to connect with you. You can say yes or no. Just like every other network, if you say yes, you're going to see all their stuff. When they post something, you will see their posts. You will see their content. And I'm saying here, use it selfishly because what is the value of me connecting with you? What is the value of me sharing my network, my connections with you? And again, that might sound a little harsh, but think about it in, in the terms about in the real world, if you went to a real marketing event, there's a bunch of people there, are you going to give your phone number and all that person, personal information to every single person you see there? Probably not. Probably you're going to talk to them first, get to know what they're about, what their business is. Oh, they run a uh, you know warehouse business and I have products I need to ship. Let me give them my business card and connect and follow up with them. Same thing on LinkedIn. Just because 10 people are asking you to connect, well, this person has no professional experience. They're not going to help further my business for me to connect with them. Um, this person has a lot of other connections that might be valuable to me. They know wholesalers or they know dealers or whatever. Maybe if I connect with this person, that's uh, my entree to meet with someone else. So use LinkedIn selfishly. What's in it for you? So you shouldn't feel bad when you're getting all of these requests to connect and you click ignore. Because if it's not too much of a value for you, what's the point? Uh, we're seeing that these up here are very similar to every other network we've talked about. Well, here's a couple of things that are unique to Facebook. Blogging. Not completely unique. Facebook has an aspect of this that we mentioned previously. Blogging, which is long-form posts, articles. You write an article, a long-form post. A longer article whereas most of the things that you're going to be posting or sharing on these networks are going to be small snippets of things usually when you're posting it's short items maybe a picture maybe a couple of sentences oftentimes a link let's say I have a website and I've got products to sell on my website I'm gonna post a link on my LinkedIn a short description to entice people, click here to buy this product and a link back to my website. Like every network. But, oh sorry, you need to LinkedIn, not Facebook. You, you need to LinkedIn. What's unique to LinkedIn is that I can write blogs, I can write longer articles, I can write them 10 paragraphs as I, if, I, if I want, I can add some pictures and bold text like a real article, like a real well-designed article. A tweet doesn't have any special styling, it's just text. A Facebook post doesn't have any special styling, it's just plain text. We saw on Google Plus that you could do get a little fancy with bold and italics, but it's plain text. Here with blogging via LinkedIn, you can put pictures and a nice header graphic and links and bullet points and all of that complexity if you choose. So if you don't have a blog, you can start one on LinkedIn for free, put your content there. Because if you take this, the SEO class, search engine optimization, what I talk in there about is that one of the valuable things for SEO is social media and blogging. So the Friday class on blogging goes into much more detail about what blogging is and how you should do it. But LinkedIn here has the ability to blog. LinkedIn has something called groups which is not completely unique because Google Plus has something like that. Over on Google Plus, what was that thing that everyone can get together around a topic on? Communities. Uh, meetups are, are for smaller connections, but uh, groups like uh, Google Plus communities where people congregate on a topic. Facebook has groups too. Quick show of hands, how many of you have logged into a Facebook group within the last year? Three people. 
How many of you have logged in within the last week to a Facebook group? Two people. So you see, groups exist on other networks, but they really don't have, I believe, and from what I'm seeing, this very unscientific poll here, they don't have a lot of use for most people. Groups over on LinkedIn are a little more valuable. They're a bit more well-known. They're a bit more populated and, and used. We'll look at them, of course. And um, those, uh, those are a couple of items here. Here's another one. Um, how should we call this? We will say uh, presentation sharing. Uh, so basically, create and share PowerPoints, PowerPoint presentations. LinkedIn has a strong system uh, for sharing specifically slideshow content, PowerPoint content, presentations. We'll see why that might be valuable, we'll see why that might be useful to you, not to everyone, but this is an avenue to consider in using uh, LinkedIn effectively. Any questions so far? Let's take a look at an example of a LinkedIn profile. If you would like, you can go up to the address, open your web browser, you can go to the address linkedin.com slash in slash Victor Campos. This is my LinkedIn. And again, I use Facebook selfishly. So Think about that before you click connect. Um, so when we set up a LinkedIn account for the first time, we're going to get some gibberish address. LinkedIn.com slash user slash Victor slash 1258972 whatever. We're going to get some not nice uh, username. If you want a nice username like this, a nice easily memorable and shareable personal address on LinkedIn. I'll show you how to do that, of course, but you don't see it right away. It's actually not that obvious to claim that name. And so of all of the hundreds of millions of people, and there are from around 200 to 400 million users on LinkedIn, hundreds of millions of users of LinkedIn, I'm the one that has claimed that name out of all the Victor Compasses in the world. I say that because it might be valuable for you to claim your name as well at some point, to stand out from your competition. I'll show you how to claim that name a little bit later. If you don't, you'll have a name that's kind of gibberish. But you'll see here that there's a profile name, um, job title, area connections, jobs, recommendations. This is an aspect like of a resume where you submit a resume in the real world and it has what are those called on a resume um, when you give also a list of recommend people that recommend you um, references. references yes you give references on a resume here it's very similar to recommendations where people write positive things about your various uh, skills and such it's all uh, it's all in this one account, so uh, this is like a resume 2.0. Everything about you, all together here, the, the paper doesn't run out, it's all here on this easily shareable address. We'll see that we can edit all of this, we'll see about suggestions to edit all of this. I do have to say though, uh, I believe I said it last month, regarding social media or anything related for a particular person, I can teach these things in concept, I can teach what the screens are, I can teach the buttons and things conceptually, but I can't teach exactly what you need to do to be the most successful. I can guide you, but I can't tell you, of course, what to write here in the main lecture, because I have to talk to everyone. But during lab times and such, we can talk individually to figure out what be, might be most effective for you. We'll see that we'll have a summary that we can write, our experience, uh, any projects that we're working on. We'll see some of these apply to some people, some don't. We'll see we have all of these various things like skills and language and such that we can activate 
not everyone needs to have all of these things, but we'll see we have the ability to fill these in, and then you have to decide if these things are valuable. Again, LinkedIn has the um, professional personal side and the professional business side. So do you want to set up your LinkedIn personal that has all of your education, or do you just want to focus on the business? It's up to you. Here's the recommendations part, people vouching for you. We'll talk about groups, your connections in the groups. And so if it's valuable to connect with me and vice versa, there's the button that says somewhere here about uh, you know, sign in to view the full, pro pro full profile and connect. Right now everything here is pretty public on my particular one because I'm putting professional things that I think is okay for people to see. But if you don't want people to see these things, it can be set to private. It can be parsed to let certain people see certain things. It's up to you again how you're going to decide to set this up, but uh, it's something to think about when we get to it. Then we've got the business side of it. Notice my address for my personal one is in this format, linkedin.com slash in slash Victor Campos. Then I've got our business page, if, if you'd like to look at this one, linkedin.com slash company slash the name of the company, which is PMD-Interactive. These are the two big possibilities of using LinkedIn, the personal and the business. We'll talk about both, of course. Uh, you have to decide, do I want to, to create a business on PMD Interactive? We'll see why we might want one. But in short, it could be a place to show off your, again, your skills, your projects, your experience, your value if you're trying to get a job as a... As a as a programmer, show here your own personal business and all your projects you've worked on. That could help you get hired. If I'm a painter and I'm part of some art collective, we could put it our art collective company page up here and talk about ourselves to get the word out. If you're trying to get, if you're trying to hire someone to work on your company, you can create a company profile and they get people to apply to your business. So again, you put your best foot forward about everything that your company is, or you as a person. So what we'll do first, you now have to decide, are you going to use your existing LinkedIn or are you going to create a new one? I'm going to go briefly through the process of creating a new LinkedIn account. If you already have one, you can click on the top right to sign in, or you can follow what I'm about to do, which is to create one. And the reason I say that, again, it might be useful for you to create a new account, just so that you see some of the features that might be new that you don't see. Oftentimes when you create a new account, it'll tell you, look what's new, look what's valuable. Yes? You could create an account and keep the previous contacts you have? Yes. Okay. In the old account. Oh, I, you'd have to reconnect with all yes. the Yes. Yes. What might be valuable also to create a new account is maybe create it, learn these things, make up a fake name. Then at the end of the day, I'll show us how to delete it. And once we learn these concepts, apply these concepts to your real account. So you can kind of use this as a sandbox to learn these things and then apply them to your real account. Yes? Is there a way to connect the two? There most likely is. I haven't had to do it very recently, but we will see here in the Facebook help section, there's a way to contact them directly, and they should give the best answer if we can merge accounts. You probably can. We just have to look at, up how to do it. Yes? You said the business one. You can create that under your personal mm -hmm. one if you have a personal one now? Yes. Exactly. So you might maybe just sign in as your personal one for the moment, and then when we get to that point, we'll create the business one. So I'm going to click on Join Today as if it's a new account. And again, I, for class purposes, I'm going to make this up. I'm John Smith today, and I'm going to put in an address. 
called um, email. Some password. This is your password to log into LinkedIn. There's a way to do it quickly via Facebook. If you're going to create a new account, you can decide to do this or not. Um, there's no positive or negative, really. That is, it'll have you log into Facebook first to vouch for you, then create the account on LinkedIn. Yes? Yes, this one, I'm making it up. This doesn't even exist. But every LinkedIn account is linked to a unique email address. So for our class purposes, I'm just going to make one up. Yes. I'll click join now. Um, there's uh, there's a few questions that it'll out that it'll ask us. Perhaps the security verification. This is one of the newer ones. Instead of trying to type in those gibberish words that are so annoying, now here's the new system. Where mine it says, click all the images that are a house. So it most likely will probably not fail this one. Select all images with a house click verify once there are none left. Interesting. Okay, so it might then ask me a location. Uh, again, thinking in terms about, let's say I'm John Smith and I have a, a business. I, I own a bakery, John's Bakery. And so this is a bakery on a on a real street down on Main Street or something and the purpose that I'm using LinkedIn is to try to reach people uh, either to come to my uh, to my business or maybe I'm trying to recruit talent I'm trying to recruit people to be new you know new bakers and such for me so if I'm running my LinkedIn that way it's valuable and it's important for me to put in a, a location that way I can reach people in my location where I'm at on Main Street if I have some sort of product or brand or whatever that is that is uh, available throughout the US or global it might not matter as much here because again this is creating my personal profile this can be completely made up so I'll just leave it alone as whatever zip code it's telling me here and my student yes or no then we've got job title and company as I'm starting to type a job title it may suggest something for me such as uh, let's say if I start to type just as an example artist do you mean artist graphic artist BD artist production artist if it recommends one of these titles I recommend for you to pick one of them if it makes sense for you if you're trying to use LinkedIn to get found you don't want to put in a title here that is so esoteric that no one knows what it is that they don't find you question the network uh, is called NCC Wireless, and then the password is CE Spring 2016. They didn't change it for the summer. CE Spring 2016. The uh, fall catalog should be coming out uh, probably by the end of this month. So as for job title here, uh, I could say maybe let's say business owner. Is that something that appears here? Business owner, independent business owner, small business owner, business process owner, whatever makes sense here. If someone is trying to find me or my business, if I'm using some of the keywords that are built into the um, the system, it's easier for them to find me instead of me making my making up one. If I already have a business on LinkedIn and I start to search it for here, it will appear. If there is, if you haven't put your business on LinkedIn yet, it won't appear here. So let's say I have you know, John's Bakery. John's Amazing Bakery. it doesn't exist so it's not giving me a suggestion and I have to then set this up here on a later page I fully create the business 
in LinkedIn. John's Amazing Bakery doesn't exist yet, so I have to choose some industry for it. There's a lot to choose from, so see about um, one that fits. This can be changed, of course, later on. Quick reminder everyone, please make sure to mute your devices. You might then get a question, well what do you want to use LinkedIn for? There's of course I'm not sure yet. The reason of choosing one of these is it will help guide you to the appropriate screens that might be more valuable to you. We'll have the ability to look at every single screen and every single tool li LinkedIn has. But because there are so many screens and so many tools, it might be useful here to personalize it this way to guide you to what is important to you. In my case, uh, I might think about building a professional network or if that doesn't quite make sense, for the moment I'll just say I'm open. If you're creating an account just like me, it'll ask me, okay, John Smith, go ahead and verify your email to let you in. Now I made this up. I don't have any email to verify. So if you get to this screen like me about confirmation, here's what you do. You go up to the address bar. It says linkedin.com slash start. Delete the part that says start. And that'll bypass this little verification screen for the moment. Let's pause here. Did everyone manage to either sign into LinkedIn or create a quick account like me? Anyone need any help? Okay, so LinkedIn has a variety of tabs and links and buttons all over the place. We'll take an overview of them. As soon as I log in, notice you've got the strip of items at the very top with a bunch of things. Wherever you're at, if you want to get back to the main screen, the home screen, we have the home button and we have the LinkedIn icon. So as a, if I wander around to different spots of LinkedIn, I can always get back to this main screen via the, the button at the top left, the icon, or the home button. Both of them take you back. The home screen is like over on Facebook. Uh, the Facebook timeline or the Twitter timeline where you're seeing the latest content. If I've made connections, if I've connected with 10 people, whatever they're posting on LinkedIn will show up here on home. Whatever I post, whatever I share will be listed here as well. Right now I don't have any connections but I'm seeing stuff. I'm seeing things because all of these are saying recommended for you. Facebook doesn't quite know what I'm into just yet. I haven't filled out the profile really. So it's giving me all of these things that might be recommended to me regarding technology and business and such. So we'll see later about sharing an update and all that good stuff. We'll see that later. Here's our home screen. If you hover your mouse over profile, you get a bunch of drop downs here. Edit profile, who's viewed your profile, your updates, and also the button of profile itself is the same thing as edit profile. Let's take a look here. Hover over profile and click edit profile. On the top left. There's going to be the ability to do some customization. I've got a, an empty box. You might see it sort of an empty box behind things. This is our background photo. Just like the other networks, if you were not here last month, one of the things that I said, so this will apply to all the networks including LinkedIn, as soon as possible, completely set up your profile, which is your biography, your logo or headshot uh, info. 
and we'll be talking these things in detail in a bit, but as soon as we can, we want to fill these things in. Yes? An out school for a long time. Mm -hmm. I just grouped schools together. Cupertino High, some of takes Kansas State. Is that all right? Because I, mean, I don't see anybody listing any big work to anybody. You mean grouping them together just... No, no, but I didn't do separate school names. I just went one, two, three, all in one line. <laughs> I would recommend to separate them. The system wants an entry for each one simply okay. so that it's put in order by dates okay. and you have the ability to specify for each yeah, one. I Although, remember, you know, I think I graduated high school, 71 or 72, something like that. <laughs> if it's not that important for you, you don't even have to put any of that stuff. This is, you can put whatever you want here that's valuable for you. So you could leave it as is, you can put nothing at all, or you can maybe get a little detail. It's all perfectly fine. Okay. Not a big deal. So what we had said last time, well, what's the point of setting all of this up? If I was on Twitter trying to get followers, the default Twitter account logo is simply an egg. I haven't hatched yet on Twitter. I'm a basic account. If I'm on Facebook and I create a, a business account on Facebook, the default logo there is a white flag. You've given up. You haven't even added your profile. Here on LinkedIn, notice it's just a generic person. You don't have any filled in, so why would anyone connect with you? What value are to you if you don't even have a little bit of this basic stuff filled in? Again, if this is not the reason for you to use Facebook, then don't worry about it. We'll get to the adding the business in a moment. But I think for most of you, probably, it still is some value to create the personal account. Uh, again, it's up to you, but let's say I'm John, the owner of John's Bakery, I need to decide, is my name also valuable that it's out there on a Google search? Is my name out there that it's valuable on articles and blogs? Or am I just focusing on my business? So let's say it was called, you know, Amazing, Amazing Cookies on 3rd Avenue, and my name's not literally on the business. Is it valuable for John Smith to be associated at all with that business? Yes or no? It's up to you to decide. So you have to decide, will you have any of this personal stuff out there in a professional aspect or not? There's a spot to add a background graphic. It tells you right there how big should it be. 1400 by 425. We've got a photo here. Uh, a little bit later on, I'll mention a couple of websites that I like to visit regarding keeping up to date with social media. And we'll see various articles about do's and don'ts and such. But one of the things that's consistent, especially on LinkedIn, is if you're going to use LinkedIn for personal, you want to put in a nice looking photo of yourself there. For a personal photo, try for a nice looking, well lit, headshot. So shoulders and up. A full body shot is not very good because that's most likely a tall picture which will get shrunk down or cropped. It might crop you in an odd way. So notice it's a square photo. Square photo. It was square on Twitter, it was square on Facebook, it was round on Google+, Plus, but it was still proportional. So, again, another network that wants a square photo. If your photo or your logo is not a square, most likely it'll crop it or distort it. And again here, nice looking, well lit. This doesn't mean you need to hire a photographer to do this. This simply means um, stand somewhere where someone takes your photo where there's a good amount of light. If you were to take my photo where I'm standing right here, it will probably not come out very well. It's rather dim here compared to where you are. If I turned on more lights or actually stood where lights are, that would be a better photo. It would be nice and clear. And this is not a photography class where we go into a lot of detail with this, but a nice bright photo shot during the day. It's pretty dark at the moment. I wouldn't try to take the photo. I could try to take my own little selfie right here. It might turn out okay if you've got practice that way. Have someone else take the photo for you. A lot of light, in focus, smiles, that sort of thing for your personal photo.
we will see that it's going to ask you perhaps a bunch of things. Where did you go to school? These are just things to get you up and running quickly with the various boxes that we'll see down here in a moment. So I'm going to ignore these, but these are valuable for you to look at, to fill in. But if you skip them or ignore them, they'll be down further. All of this stuff is editable. It may not be obvious, but notice, oh, I misspelled my own name. You can hover over your name, then you will see the pencil to edit any of these items. So if you need to change this a year later that you're not working at John's Amazing Bakery, it wasn't that amazing after all, you can click there to edit it. See, it's not obvious until you hover over. We'll talk about experience education in a moment. View profile as. These are some interesting, useful things. I'm looking at my profile as myself. How does it look like when someone else looks at it? Well, I can switch between there. A little triangle also. This is pretty new. Save my whole account as a PDF. Download the whole thing as one big old PDF that I can easily share to people. If I've got a resume that I've already written in some other format, PDF, Word, whatever, I can upload that to help me save time and effort. Look at these other bits in a moment. Right below this, at the moment, my account is linkedin.com slash johnsmith dash 0683991926. Really rolls off the tongue. If this was your real account, you would probably want to edit that. And again, it's not obvious that you can edit that until you hover over. When you hover over, you'll get a little gear. If you're building this testing account that I made up like this, it doesn't matter that I do this, but if this is your real account and you haven't done this, I recommend to claim your short personalized name like this. You hover over, you click the, the little gear, and on the right side, your public URL is this. If that's not what I want, I click the pencil and I change it. I won't do that because this is not a real account. I can change that. And if I want it to be Victor Campos, well, Victor Campos is already taken. I'll have to choose Victor Campos 2 or the Victor Campos or use your middle initial or something. But there's only a finite amount of these names, so that's why it's important for you to choose one uh, as soon as you can. Yes? Can you just use your website address? Or so you can... No, because this one is still, we're still in the personal one. Uh, if if it's me as a person that I want to get found as a person, I put my name. Later on, we'll look at the business one. Oh, I see. So my, my name, I started using this some years, some time ago when I had to, when I was working for a company, and I didn't care. I was like, yeah, I've got to do this. Mm -hmm. So it was just personal. I see. Okay. So you're saying that I should have a whole separate one for the business? Like, yes, but we're, we're, we're getting to that. Okay. You need to... In whatever you use, whatever you have right now, you can use it or just hold on with with it because then we're going to use it to create the business one in a moment. So this is my personal profile, and I'm going to put in my name there. And notice there's also the spot. Uh, right now it's public, and you have these options, just like every other network. Do you want this to be public that anyone can find it in the network, or anyone can find it on a search? It's up to you to decide what you want here. I could easily put that public and no one can see this. However, depending on how you're using it, you may want to keep this public. Notice at least the basics will be shown. You can't turn that one off. But if you don't want to show what your current positions are and all of that, you can turn those off individually. If you're going to be using biz, uh, Facebook only for for business as a business page that we'll get to soon, perhaps turning this one on is what you want, meaning um, uh, meaning private. Make my public profile visible to no one. They should just simply say, make it private, make it public. But this one is, make my public private? Yes. Make my public public? Yes. I'll leave that public, if that makes sense. If you've got, if you're, if you're in this class, most likely you already have a website, some .com or something. If you would like to, you can put a badge. You can put a link on your website that links you back to your LinkedIn. 
This is something you can go look on, uh, look at on your own, but that'll take you to a screen where it'll say, okay, copy this code onto your site, and then do this, do this, do this, and then you will get a little badge on your site, a little icon about you that can go on your website. It's a little bit out of our scope here because this requires you log into your site and you, you upload this piece of code. We're not really going to do it in the lecture. If you'd like how to do this, we can talk about it individually. But that's what that badge is, to add a little mini profile to your, uh, to your website that leads people back to your main LinkedIn profile. It'll give you a preview of what your profile looks like to people. Mine is very bare. I haven't done much with it. I'll click back to the profile link. We have many other things to look at here. I'll, I'll get back to them. See, now it's suggesting to me, Evan, uploaded a picture. Upload a picture. And would you like it round or square? So we'll look at this screen, this home, this edit screen in more detail a little bit later. I'm just kind of showing you an overview of these different screens. Home is where you see all of the latest updates. Profile link is all about your profile. Who's looked at your profile? What updates you've published? We'll publish an update a little later. So we'll get back to profiles in a bit. Let's go look at my network. If you hover over my network, we have connections, add contact, people you may know, find alumni. If you click connections, these are connections you've made on Facebook, uh, on LinkedIn. These are the ones that you've approved. We are connected on LinkedIn. We've got import, we've got organizer, remove connections, add connections, Under Add Connections, if I want to, I can link my Hotmail or I can link my Gmail. And LinkedIn will scan my address book and then show these seven people in your address book are also on LinkedIn. Would you like to connect with them? If you say yes, then LinkedIn will send a notification to them and say, uh, John Smith is trying to connect with you. Would you like to connect on, connect on LinkedIn? They, it's up to them to say yes or no. And again, the point of connections on LinkedIn is to form this network, this valuable network. Why are you connected with people on LinkedIn? Not just because your buddies on Facebook. Don't think about it that way. Don't use LinkedIn like Facebook, which is where people connect to share family updates and funny cat pictures and all of that. We're going to use LinkedIn to for professional purposes. So you don't need to connect with your with your with your family members and your kids and and your work acquaintances if it's not valuable for you to do so. So you have to decide, do I want to link my address books and try to connect with other people? Yes? Are there connections on the same network? I mean, on, like on Hotmail and such? I would link on I think you'd have to click on that icon again of the particular network and submit your address one more time so you can scan it again. The first time you did it, it scanned it, and now if you wanted to scan your address book again, you'd have to tell it again, here's my address oh, book. Oh, I see. It has to be, I have to be on my personal computer so it can scan my address No, because here it asks you, if you've got Hotmail, click here and then log into your Hotmail to check your address book. If you've got an address book on your own personal email account, then yes, on your computer. But if you've got like a Yahoo Mail account, you can do that from any any computer. Mm -hmm. People you may know, again, as you use Facebook more, uh, if you use LinkedIn more, as you use LinkedIn more, it'll start to see your connections and it'll suggest you know this person, and that person knows this person. Maybe you can connect. So it's going to give you all these suggestions all the time. Now, again, it gives me 10 recommendations, but are they valuable for me to connect to? If they're not, don't connect with them. Don't simply make a lot of connections. Don't simply build a huge network thinking that it's going to work like Twitter, 
or Facebook or Google Plus that I need a lot of followers. Remember on, remember on for the other networks I said about the one percent rule. If you weren't here last month, we said for social media, think of the one percent rule, which is one percent of your followers are the most serious. Those are the ones that are most likely to like your post, reply to your post, buy your product, follow through, become a conversion. Very small number then. I've got a hundred followers. What's one percent of a hundred? One. One person is the most serious out of all of that. Now that's a very conservative number. Maybe your content, your products are so amazing, you're closer to 50%. Well, if I've got 20 followers, 50% is 10 people. If I've got seven followers, 50% of that is three and a half, four people. So if I operate under the 1% rule on all my social media, the more followers that I get, that's why I want to build followers on all my networks. The more followers that I have, that 1% is a larger number. When I have a thousand followers on Instagram, a one percent of it, a thousand is t ten people, a hundred. Any math majors out there? What's one percent out of a thousand? Ten people. Ten people are the most serious that will buy your product because it's very easy to give a like. It's very easy to reply with a smiley face, but suddenly the mouse is very hard to use to click buy, or to click, you know, call me or whatever. So one percent. Conversely, LinkedIn. We're not really going to think about things in LinkedIn as the 1% rule. We're going to think that every connection we make has that value. Every connection that we approve is for the purpose of getting something, some goal, some conversion, something to happen. So for LinkedIn, that's what I'm saying, selfish, selfishly. LinkedIn, however, every connection counts. Don't just approve any request. Don't approve until you've checked their profile and see what, they, what they're about, what their skill set is, what's valuable for you to connect, to say, yes, let's connect. So that's what I'm saying about this whole part about upload your address book, sure, but is it important that you connect with the people in your address book? Or is it all just personal? Is it all just friends and family? Are you going to build a business on the backs of your friends and family? Maybe it'll work a couple of times, but at a certain point, you need new customers or friends. So that's the network part. Find alumni self-explanatory. If you go over to jobs, let's look at jobs briefly. This doesn't matter to most people. We'll see. Jobs are the place where then I can go look what's available for me to apply to. It's the new, it's the new classifieds. If I go to jobs, it says, okay, you're probably searching in the greater San Diego area. What's a title or a keyword or a company you're trying to find a job at? I've got various other tabs. Let's say I'm trying to find a job as a baker. I'm going to start to type. I get these things bakery clerk, bakery manager, let's see, bakery chef, is that a thing? 19 baker chef jobs, lead baker at the Marriott, sounds good, baker at Einstein Noah restaurants, pastry cook at La Parfait, brunch line cook, etc. So if I'm trying to get some job or a connection, See here, Face uh, LinkedIn has a spot where I can do some job searching. I can narrow it down. One in Oceanside, two in Encinitas. Marriott and Einstein Noah Restaurant Group. I can create job alerts. Send me an email when a new when a new job is posted. That's just at the Jobs tab at the top. And then once you search, you can create an alert.
Okay, on the opposite side, I'm not looking to get hired. I'm looking to hire. I'm looking for people to come to work for me. That's when we've got my jobs. Um, as well as the business page that we'll get to a little bit later. Notice I've got post a job. Sign into LinkedIn Recruiter. You can go look at that on your own. That'll get us off topic. Again, that's a whole process. If you're trying to find people to work for, I'm just going to back out of it. But via jobs, we have both aspects. Now, at a certain point, we're going to run into this thing that uh, LinkedIn has, like every network, free aspects and paid aspects. And it's a little bit more obvious on LinkedIn and Facebook about the paid aspects. You can use LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter and all of them for free. But you're going to get more value out of LinkedIn and Facebook if you pay a little bit. I'll touch on it a little bit. You can go look at that on your own because you can, you can get a lot of value out of the free stuff. But we saw when we talked about Facebook last month that Facebook itself actively is making it more difficult for a company to reach an audience on Facebook unless you pay. We went through the whole lecture all about that. That, to some degree, applies on LinkedIn. Uh, I don't believe as much. You can still use all of the free aspects of LinkedIn pretty well, but it's going to be recommending you several times. Why not go for LinkedIn Premium? with this extra feature and that extra feature. You'll have to decide if you think that works for you. There's always a click to show me more. But we're going to use LinkedIn as, as free as possible. We've got interests. Hover over interests and click on companies. This is where we will create the company. You can look at it at the moment, but we'll do it together a little later. Under interests, I can follow a company. I can say, what is Qualcomm sharing on LinkedIn? I want to keep up with Qualcomm. I want to keep up with Microsoft. I want to keep up with this college. So I can keep up to date with companies. Or I can create my own company page. As I showed, I have Victor Campos on LinkedIn and I have PMD Interactive on LinkedIn. This is where I would create and manage the business page. I need some setup, which we will do together a little later, but here's where we find it. It's under interests. I wouldn't have put it there. It doesn't quite make sense conceptually, but that's where it is. Companies. Groups. So this is like I said about um, groups, sort of like with uh, Facebook. This is a place where people can congregate over a topic. If you look at uh, groups. Welcome to the new LinkedIn groups. Join private communities, enjoy meaningful conversations, and get the latest ideas and news. We've updated the experience. If you've got that little tour button at some point, maybe take the tour. Uh, but I'm going to close it. I don't have any connections here. My groups discover. I can make my own groups similar to Google+. You can join existing communities or create a community. What did I say, however, about creating a community on Google+. Well, a very simple answer, which was don't. <laughs> Longer answer, yes, you need to work it. You need to create a community on Google Plus and work it and nurture it and get people to join and comment and you have to moderate it and take out the spam. Don't do communities. LinkedIn, you can join an existing community or create a community or group, that is. I want to say the same thing. Don't create a group because then you have to manage it, remove the spam and the ruffians and all of that. And so if you're busy with other endeavors, why are you going to pile something else now, too, to manage a group? I recommend joining groups rather than creating groups. You would go off to discover groups or search. We'll look at it later. But groups here could be useful to find other people. I'm, I'm an owner of a... I'm the owner of a bakery. I want to find other people, other foodies or other small businesses locally under groups. We'll look at that later, but that's under interests.
slide share. Let's take a look at this one. This is another topic, but this is what I was saying earlier in my notes about one of the unique aspects of LinkedIn is that it also has this feature. Discover, share, present. Share what you know and love through presentations, infographics, documents, and more. Has anyone heard of the website slideshare.net before today? SlideShare was a website that existed independently for several years. It's basically the YouTube of PowerPoint. YouTube is obviously the biggest video sharing site. Well, SlideShare.net is like the YouTube of PowerPoint. A PowerPoint is a, is a digital presentation. It's a slideshow. It's a PDF that you put together. Five slides on a topic showing your expertise. So SlideShare, they've been around probably 10 years at least. And they don't have hundreds of millions of users like some of these other networks. But they were valuable enough that LinkedIn bought them a few years ago for probably a few hundred million dollars. So the people that invented LinkedIn got bought and integrated with LinkedIn. The value of that is that if I create slideshows or PowerPoints and upload them to SlideShare, I already have an easier way then to reach more people because they're integrated together. Um, let's see some example. The buyer's journey, content strategy for your blog or business. Someone created this presentation putting it out there, most likely for free. Chris Lemma updated two days ago, 4,000 views. Classroom management tips for kids and adolescents, 4,000 views. Uh, designing for emails. It's, it seems to be eight hacks to design emails that are eagerly clicked on. 121,000 views. People are putting out this content that I might care about, that I might view, like that one about emails. It's a presentation, 16 slides. Next slide, next slide, next slide. It's a presentation. I could do that in PowerPoint with a template. 119 people saw it. 34 people shared on Twitter, 79 on LinkedIn, 41 on Facebook, and other networks. Sounds great. What's in it for you? You create a presentation. You create a simple 5 or 10 or 3 page slideshow about some expertise topic that you have, share it on SlideShare, and it may go viral. I don't have any YouTube skills, but I can put together a presentation in PowerPoint, and it might become a hit here. Because this is, it's a social network it's, as well. It has, you can post something, share something, you can um, get likes and shares and views and all of that. It's content that I'm creating. Look at this, 18 comments. People are commenting here. Some of it's kind of spammy. But people are, people are active on this content. In all of social media, the trick about what should I share on social media? Good content. Content that people care about, that want to reply to, that want to share. Um, that helps you. Use it to create simple, effective, useful presentations that could get you more views, traffic, hits, sales, calls, whatever you're trying to do. You create this five-page presentation giving away this amazing advice. And at the very end, it says, and for even more information, give us a call. And you put your phone number on it. Or you put in those a presentation of a few slides, and at the very end, to find out more, visit our website with a link. Yes? So you create Maybe a five-minute, would you say? Well, again, it, this, is a, this is more of a slideshow that they click next, next, next. So I wouldn't think about it in terms of time. Oh. I would think about it like five slides and five such. Five slides with, with captions underneath it or, or something like that. Yeah, just like we're seeing here. This okay. is just one page here with a little text. Next page, a little more text. And you can make a link in. So you do that under in. You go to in to get to, get to that. No, you go under interests and then oh, slide share. I lost it. Okay. There it is. I found it now. Mm -hmm. I got it. Slide share. Thank you. 
So most likely, uh, I'm seeing the logo of this company on every slide, but then most likely if I get to the last one, I haven't seen this one until now, look at this, the last slide of this one says connect with us. And all of these are active links to go to the Twitter, to go to the Google Plus. 119,000 people saw this, 1% of that. There's some amount of people that then really did something else, like maybe bought the, bought the video presentation version or maybe called them to hire them, or maybe sent in a request and got the ball rolling that eventually becomes a sale. So that was that network was important enough that a few years ago LinkedIn bought them. I forgot the price, but it was hundreds of millions of dollars. And now it's integrated into LinkedIn, and it's important for you to think about that. Again, I can't teach you the perfect. I cannot teach you the perfect presentation for you to create, um, but I can guide you. Again, a little bit later, I'll show you a couple of websites that I recommend that will give you even more advice and such, maybe content creation advice. But content creation advice is individualized. Not that I'm trying to promote my own company, but that's what my company would do. We would talk to an, a client and talk specifically what do they need and here's our recommendations for your company to succeed. I cannot give you a one-size-fits-all to a whole class of 30 people. I can talk individually during breaks and such if you'd like, but in general, look at what has succeeded and think about what can I do a variation of that of. If I'm looking at the home page of what's hot, on SlideShare or what's hot on the home page of LinkedIn, this is content that has risen to the top. Why millennial activism is actually digital marketing. Um, the federal student loan program was created in the 60s. It's time for an update. These are articles that are getting people's attention. Can I write an article or create a, a PowerPoint or create a version of this to reach people? Startup names matter. How to create an impacting startup name. So if I'm about to create my business, I haven't quite thought of its name, I might want to read that. That's very important to me. Can I create something, some presentation of about 10 slides or something to share to people that might have them share my stuff and get more views, more hits, more traffic? All of that is under SlideShare under Interests. Looking at back on LinkedIn and going again over to Interests, this time learning. I won't mention too much on this one, but have any of you heard of lynda.com before today? If you're in the world of graphic design and web design and technology, there's a website called LinkedIn lynda.com, which is uh, online tutorials, a subscription online tutorial system that has been around several years for people to learn various topics. Yes? Do you, you recommend yes, but um, it depends on what you want to do. If you're trying to learn Photoshop, if you're trying to learn uh, you know, design or product design and all that, yes, it's very, very valuable. I've, it's been around a long time. I've used it. It is valuable. And do you need the program on your device in order to follow it? Nope, you can watch the videos. If I don't have Blender or Photoshop, I can still watch the videos and follow along, but then I'm going to be itching to try it because I don't have the software. Right? Now, lynda.com has been around also 10, 15 years. They've been around a while. And it's all about videos, professionally made videos on a variety of topics, but they are not free. They cost between $30 a month and like $300 a year. This is a big, famous company with a lot of training videos. I've used them. I've learned a thing or two from them. The purpose of lynda.com is for you to learn something. It's not really that you will upload your training videos. It's more coming to you. But this like SlideShare was so important that LinkedIn bought them. LinkedIn bought lynda.com like last year for another few hundred million dollars. So Linda and SlideShare are both part of LinkedIn now. Notice I see it right at the top here, interests, learning. They don't even call it lynda.com. You want to learn something? Here's our lynda.com. And then 
subscription-based, 10-day free trial that most people end up buying. It's about $30 a month. Freelance, uh, I haven't looked at this one very much, so I don't have much to say about it. Take your project from to do to done. Profinder helps you hire top local. Okay, it seems to be a competitor to others that I've seen, such as freelancer.com, freelance marketplace. If I need someone to design my website, if I need someone to design my logo, if I need someone to, to work for me for some freelance jobs, it looks like LinkedIn now has that system. It's similar to me trying to hire someone via the jobs category. I'm not exactly sure the difference between the two. Again, I need to educate myself more. This seems relatively new. I haven't seen it myself. But here, what service do I need? Uh, I don't know, logo design. This will, in theory, connect me once I fill in all these questions, connect me with people that might be interested in, in this. And I suppose these people are vetted and their prices are reasonable and all of that. So LinkedIn Profinder, I'm sure that was an acquisition that they made recently and it's one of these freelance places. Has anyone heard of Fiverr.com? F-I-V-E-R-R. -E this is another site that's been around a long time and it came to fame as the place where you hire people five dollars at a time. You hire someone for five dollars to make you a logo for five dollars someone will make you a PowerPoint presentation etc it's grown bigger and bigger and now people that sell their services here can make a whole tier a whole level of service for five dollars you get this but for two dollars more you get that and for seven more dollars you get it in two days so this is a possible place where you can go and get some freelancers to do work for you and if it sounds like what strangers to do work for me Yes, but all of these systems are set up for reviews and ratings. So if I do a quick search, this person, I will design two magnificent logos in 24 hours for $10. I would then go in and if you hover over it, they've got five stars based on 33,000 reviews. So it's not just some kid working on the side on the weekends doing this stuff in this case. It's someone with a lot of reviews. I'm sure I can find people here that are, and not to disparage them, some kid working out of his bedroom in the weekends. But if that kid has five stars and doing it affordably, why not? I would go in further and read the reviews. People leave reviews here. Am I going to trust... Um, am I going to trust Shining Star 11 to do my logos for five bucks? Maybe. They have 99% positive review. Their average response time is two hours. I can go look at their portfolio, what they've done. 577 reviews, 11 orders in the queue. I'd be in 12th place. But they claim they can do it in 24 hours. Fiverr it's simply the address. You can go up to oh, okay. fiverr.com. It's not connected to LinkedIn, but it's related to LinkedIn's profile. It's like, an, it's like an alternative. I'll write them here on my notes. Uh, Profinder, we've got Fiverr.com, we've got also Freelancer.com. This is not LinkedIn. So on LinkedIn. Fiverr is non-LinkedIn, Profinder is LinkedIn, but all three of these are find a freelancer to do work for you. These three that I mentioned are the ones that I, well these two, oops, that's Fiverr with two R's. These two here are ones that I've known for a while and dealt, dealt with a bit. I have not dealt with Profinder, but it's officially from LinkedIn. So if there's any other ones out there, I can't quite vouch for them. I don't know them all. But here are some that most likely will give you the best results.
we'll look at a couple more things, then we'll take a break. Um, at the top right corner, we have all of our notifications. Just like over on Facebook, Twitter, whatever, we have notifications. Did someone request a connection? Did someone like my post? Did someone reply to my article? So we've got the messages. I don't have any. I don't have any connections. What about any other notifications? Does people look at my profile or reply to my post? Uh, is someone trying to connect with me? Do I want to try to connect with other people? And then the last icon, there's your sign out. If you're trying to sign out for the day, it's under your profile icon, which will change to your picture once you've edited your profile. Various other features, change your language, post a job, try the premium one where you get a few more features, like being able to message people throughout LinkedIn. Right now, the basic one doesn't let you message a lot of people for security purposes, but guess what? If you pay, it vouches for you a little bit more, and that way you can connect with directly with more people. Help Center, this is where I would go to look up, can I merge a couple of LinkedIn profiles? Can I contact someone for more complex issues? Settings, later at the end of the day, settings are where, where we would go to shut down this account if we don't want it after all. And just like every other network, we have a search feature. It says search for people, jobs, companies, and more. And you'll see on the left drop-down menu here, search for people, jobs, companies, groups, universities, posts, and your inbox. This is, just like the other networks, a way for you to make connections. On Twitter, I can search a hashtag on a topic to find other people using that topic. On LinkedIn, very similar. I can search posts or articles that people are writing. I can search for groups about a topic. We'll do search a little later, but we're looking at the overview. There's a lot of different screens on LinkedIn, like every network. We've got advanced, which is more advanced. Advanced search, that is. So that's a general overview about the different screens. We'll get into more detail right after the break, but any, uh, any questions at this point? Okay, it's 7.45. We'll take a 10-minute break until 7.55. I'll turn the printer back on if you'd like to print the syllabus. Uh, we'll be back at 7.55, and we'll look at more LinkedIn.